Hey everyone, uh, so in this video, uh, this one will be pretty short. I'm just gonna go over kind of um, debts and deficits and those things and, and kind of what's really important here. So uh, the basic idea when we look at like the, the biggest criticisms of fiscal policy, um, it, it really comes down to the fact that we're relying on, at least in democratic countries, we're relying on elected officials um, to manage the use of our resources in a significant way. And a lot of times they don't do that very well. Um, the biggest problem is that politicians more than anything else is that they want to get reelected, right? So the way that you get reelected in a democratic country is you know, essentially by giving the people what they want, then you get their votes and you get to keep your job. And so oftentimes what that means is that we have politicians who um, somewhat understand macroeconomics and they are um, kind of giving in to a population that mostly does not understand macroeconomics. And so what we tend to see is expansionary fiscal policy all the time, whether we're in a recession, whether we're at full employment, um, even if we have a small inflationary gap, we see it, you know, expansionary fiscal policy at, you know, all the time. So what you'll see is like, um, for instance, when the economy is doing really well, and that's the time when you should start cutting back on government spending so that you reduce your deficit, uh, maybe even run a surplus when you have that like inflationary gap. Oftentimes what you'll hear is you hear politicians saying things like, oh, you know, look, our economy is better than it's been in a long time. Now's the time for us to take some money and pay for the things that are really important. Right. Or now is the time for us to take the extra tax money that we're collecting and for us to give that back to the people that it came from so that you'll see like calls during inflationary periods of we should increase government spending that now that we have this like extra money coming in, we should do more to help the homeless, we should do more for education, we should do more to fix our roads and bridges that we've neglected over the years. And so even during inflationary periods, we start seeing more government more government spending. And then when we have a recession that happens, you see now the arguments of, well, now, you know, it, during this recession, times are really bad, you know, we need to be helping more people. But you even start to see during recessions, you start to see like a lot of pressure on governments to cut their budgets. Um, people are feeling like my family's hurting during this recession, we had to cut back, shouldn't the government have to cut back as well. So a lot of times, people's like initial feelings about what the government spending should be is the opposite of what we want fiscally. That in order for fiscal policy to work, we wanna be increasing government spending in a recession. We wanna be cutting it when we have an inflationary gap. Um, but people, the common voters, they oftentimes want the opposite. So what we see a lot of is we see a lot of like expansionary fiscal policy all the time. Um, you know, politicians in favor of cutting taxes and increasing government spending. Uh, now, it's not always the same between like Republicans and Democrats. Republicans tend to always want to cut taxes. Democrats tend to always want to increase government spending. Um, but both of those things are expansionary. And so what, we what we've seen over like basically the last 40 years in the United States, what we've seen politically is kind of like a compromise between Democrats and Republicans of constant expansionary fiscal policy, right? Democrats saying we want to spend more money on you know, social programs, social welfare, things like that, education. Republicans saying we want to cut taxes. And so the, the, the trade-off there, okay, we'll let you spend more we'll, if we can keep cutting taxes, has been that we've racked up a massive amount of government debt because we're constantly spending more and bringing in less because we're cutting taxes, but we're also increasing government spending. So what we've seen over the last 40 years is like constant expansionary fiscal policy with maybe like a two to three year period during the Clinton years where we had a little bit of, um, you know, uh, contractionary fiscal policy. But outside of like two to three years in the last 40 years, it's been all expansionary fiscal policy and it's been tax cuts and increases to government spending, which is what's led to a large increase in our in our government debt. Now. Why this never gets solved is because the two parties, they both argue like, you know, hey, you guys should cut your spending. No, we should, you guys should stop cutting taxes. But it's it's always, you know, the other guy's, you know, fiscal policy that should change, not, not mine. So we've seen this constant 
you know, expansionary fiscal policy, which is, you know, we're at the point now where it, it's almost necessary for our GDP to continue growing at the levels that, it, that it's at. We need to just continually rack up more and more and more debt. You know, if we were to try to balance our budget, our economy would probably collapse because of the, the rapid decrease in government spending that we would have. Um, so it's definitely a problem with fiscal, with fiscal policy, and it's clearly a long-term problem. And, and, you know, I don't see the solution. I'm not sure, you know, many, many economists do. Like, how do we get out of this position? Um, but clearly, it's, it's not in our long-term health to continue to rack up massive, massive debts um, to kind of keep GDP slowly growing where it is. Um, so that's one of the main problems with fiscal policy. There's a few other problems with fiscal policy beyond the deficit debt expansionary, constant expansionary fiscal policy. Um, but the main one that I want you guys to understand is the deficits and debts and things like that. You should also realize that whenever we're in a recession, it's automatically going to move, the, the budget's automatically going to move deeper in the red, deeper in a deficit, right? So oftentimes the way that we say that in econ is that we say move towards a deficit or move towards a surplus, that if we're entering into a recession, the budget's automatically going to move towards a deficit. If we're in a recession, an inflationary gap, it should automatically move toward a surplus. So even though it might still be a deficit, it's a smaller deficit towards a surplus, towards a deficit. That's the language we use in econ to talk about whether the deficit's getting bigger or smaller surplus. So, all right, uh, so that's deficits, debts, surpluses. Um, you know, big problem, not a lot of solutions, at least out there right now that I see, um, but something for you to be aware of. So, all right, see you guys in the next video.